I seen your sex. Right, question. Whatever it was from my homework, it didn't have a number. And I made a real hash of trying to mark it and get stuff back, so apologies for that. I missed out a factor of G and it just messed me up completely and my head wasn't in the game. So, okay. Part A, for those who got confused, but I don't think many did, was two ways of doing it. Okay. So one way is if we got basically a mass fare of 15 kilograms and we've got a mass fare of 4 kilograms okay some people went on to work out the resultant force you don't need that really this is 4 g cos alpha because they're equal and opposite and they're not in the direction of any movement we don't have to worry about them really okay and we've got downwards of a slope we get 4 g sine alpha Okay, we get told that sine alpha equals 0.6 or 3 fifths. Okay, so what a lot of you did, which I thought was brilliant because I've never used this approach before, is take the whole thing as moving that way and we're saying, okay, what are the forces that are causing it to move that way? The force that's causing it to move that way in the whole system is this 15G there. So we're saying that's a 15G and that must be bigger than anything that's causing it to not move that way. So any force is acting that way, which is that 4G sine alpha. Okay, and that's equal to the total mass of a system, which is 15 plus 4, which is 19, okay, times by the acceleration, A. Okay, and 4G sine alpha is 2.4G, so 15G take away 2.4G is 12.6G, equals 19a so we do 19a is 12.6g divided by 19 and we get when i finally get to the right answer 6.4989 dot 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 so that rounds to 6.50 meters per second squared okay i'm losing the pen Part B goes on to say, find the tension in the string, okay? I'm just going to go through how I would do part A first, because it does offer a little alternative. I formed an equation of motion for this one, and said for this one, essentially, we've got tension, and we've got 4G sine alpha going that way. So if we form F equals MA for just that one, we get T minus 2.4G equals mass 4, so 4A. And if we look at this particle here, okay, we've got 15g going down, and the tension slowing it down, so we get 15g minus t equals its mass, which is 15. And then we get simultaneous equations, and we can add them together, and when we add them together, we get to this point, okay. So that's how I would do A, and that's how I've always done it, but I quite like the approach that a lot of people had with A as well. So B is find the tension, so I'm just going to look at this particle here. 15, it's got 15G going down, it's got T going up. So we get 15G minus T equals the mass 15 times the acceleration, which was 6.4989 dot, 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 dot. So we get T equals 15G minus A, basically. And when we sub that in, we get 49.5 Newtons. Okay, part C is find the magnitude of the force of Q exerted on Q by block R. So we zoom in on block Q. Block Q is in here, sitting on top of block R. So there's block R, there's block Q. I'm going to look at just the forces acting on block Q. So acting on block Q, we've got its weight. Okay. Its weight is 3G, okay. Stopping it from plummeting down with acceleration due to gravity mm -hmm. and slowing down its acceleration to 6.49 is the reaction force it's getting from R. Okay, now the reaction force it's getting from R we're gonna call R. There's nothing else acting on Q. It's got its weight and it's got a reaction force. That reaction force isn't equal to 3G because it's accelerating downwards. This 3G must be bigger. 
okay? So we get 3G minus R equals the mass of that Q, which is 3 times the acceleration, which is 6.4989 dot 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 dot. Okay, so when we rearrange that, we get R equals 3 brackets G minus A, and that comes out at 9.90 newtons. Right, and um, finally D. I did a video going through D, but I got the tension wrong. Okay, so I'm just going to give one with a right answer for tension. Okay, apologies for that. So we look at our pulley here. We've got a tension pulling down on it, so that's 6.4989. And we've got a tension pulling in that direction, 6.4989. Okay, now our resultant force, because they're equal, the resultant force is going to be exactly halfway between them. So that's what we need to work out. I'm going to call this angle theta and this angle theta. Okay. And if we resolve that, we're going to get 6.4989 cos theta. And if we resolve this one, we're going to get the same again. So it'll be 2 times 6.4989 cos theta. Okay. If we resolve it that way and that way, I'm going to get my 6.4989 sine theta and 6.4989 sine theta. And because they're equal and opposite, they don't count towards the resultant force. We can just get rid of them, basically. Okay, so that's what we care about. So all we have to do now is work out what cos theta is. Okay, so we look at our triangle. That angle there is two theta. There's our alpha, right angle triangle. Okay, so we get theta equals 90 minus alpha divided by two. And to get alpha, just get your calculator and do inverse sine of 0 0.6. Okay, 90 minus that divided by 2, and that gives us an angle of theta, which is whatever it is. I went through it last time, so you can probably work it out, it's fine. Okay, and when we plug that into there, we should get 88.5 newtons for the comp um, overall magnitude of the force acting on the pulley. Okay, there are a couple of tricky things in there in C and D. That's why I chose this question. Okay, I didn't expect me to mess up so badly on A, so sorry for that. Okay, I hope that makes sense. If not, let me know and I'll try and do a more clear video or explain it in class. Okay, bye.